A stone tool is, in the most general sense, any tool made either partially or entirely out of stone. Although stone tool-dependent societies and cultures still exist today, most stone tools are associated with prehistoric particularly Stone Age cultures that have become extinct. Archaeologists often study such prehistoric societies, and refer to the study of stone tools as lithic analysis. Ethno-archaeology has been a valuable research field in order to further the understanding and cultural implications of stone tool use and manufacture. Stone has been used to make a wide variety of different tools throughout history, including arrowheads, spear points and querns. Stone tools may be made of either ground stone or chipped stone, and a person who creates tools out of the latter is known as a flint napper. Chip stone tools are made from cryptocrystalline materials such as chert or flint, radiolarite, chalcedony, obsidian, basalt and quartzite via a process known as lithic reduction. One simple form of reduction is to strike stone flakes from a nucleus of material using a hammerstein or similar hard hammer fabricator. If the goal of the reduction strategy is to produce flakes, the remnant lithic core may be discarded once it has become too small to use. In some strategies, however, a flint napper reduces the core to a rough unifacial or bifacial preform, which is further reduced using soft hammer flaking techniques or by pressure flaking the edges. More complex forms of reduction include the production of highly standardized blades, which can then be fashioned into a variety of tools such as scrapers, knives, sickles and microliths. In general terms, chip stone tools are nearly ubiquitous in all pre-metal using societies because they are easily manufactured. The tool stone is usually plentiful, and they are easy to transport and sharpen. Evolutionary Development of Technocomplexes From the 19th century archaeologists had been turning up prehistoric worked stone tools that appeared to be typologically classifiable into taxa. They refer to these homotaxial groups of stone tools as industries and named them after the type site, for example, Aculian after Saint Achael, and later Old Owen from Old Uve Gorge. In the earlier 20th century they became complexes and technologies, in the later, technocomplexes. So, in archaeology a technocomplex is a distinct culture that employed a specific technology. In 1969 in the second edition of World Prehistory, Graham Clark envisioned an evolutionary progression of flint napping in which the dominant lithic technologies occurred in a fixed sequence from Mode 1 through Mode 5. He assigned to them relative dates, Modes 1 and 2 to the Lower Paleolithic, 3 to the Middle Paleolithic, 4 to the Advanced and 5 to the Mesolithic. They were not to be conceived, however, as either universal, that is, they did not account for all lithic technology, or as synchronous, they were not in effect in different regions simultaneously. Mode 1, for example, was in use in Europe long after it had been replaced by Mode 2 in Africa. Clark's scheme was adopted enthusiastically by the archaeological community. One of its advantages was the simplicity of terminology, for example, the Mode 1, Mode 2 transition. The transitions are currently of greatest interest. Consequently, in the literature, the stone tools used in the period of the Paleolithic are divided into four modes, each of which designate a different form of complexity, and which in most cases followed a rough chronological order. Pre-mode I The earliest evidence of the use of stone tools dates to 3.4 million years ago. Also archaeological discoveries in Kenya in 2015, identifying possibly the oldest known evidence of hominin use of tools to date, have indicated that Kenyanthropus platyops may have been the earliest tool users known. Groove, cut and fractured animal bone fossils, made by using stone tools, were found in Dikeka in Ethiopia near the remains of Salem. A young Australopithecus of Pharensis girl who lived about 3.3 million years ago, the time of the Australopithecus of Pharensis Lucy, 
The oldest known stone tools, found in 2011 at Lake Turkana in Kenya, are dated to be 3.3 million years old, and predate the genus Homo by half a million years. The dating of the stone tools was completed in 2013. The oldest known Homo fossil is 2.8 million years old compared to the 3.3 million year old stone tools. The stone tools may have been made by Australopithecus afarensis, the species whose best fossil example is Lucy, which inhabited East Africa at the same time as the date of the oldest stone tools. Nepgea video modi, the old Owen industry the earliest stone tools in the lifespan of the genus Homo are Modwan tools, and come from what has been termed the old Owen industry, named after the type of site found in Old Uve Gorge, Tanzania, where they were discovered in large quantities. Old Owen tools were characterized by their simple construction, predominantly using core forms. These cores were river pebbles, or rocks similar to them, that had been struck by a spherical hammerstone to cause conchoidal fractures removing flakes from one surface, creating an edge and often a sharp tip. The blunt end is the proximal surface, the sharp, the distal. Old Owen is a percussion technology. The earliest known Old Owen tools yet found date from 2.6 million years ago, during the Lower Paleolithic period, and have been uncovered at Ghana in Ethiopia. After this date, the Old Owen industry subsequently spread throughout much of Africa, although archaeologists are currently unsure which hominin species first developed them, with some speculating that it was Australopithecus gara, and others believing that it was in fact Homo habilis. Homo habilis was the hominin who used the tools for most of the old Owen in Africa, but at about 1.9 minus 1.8 million years ago Homo erectus inherited them. The industry flourished in southern and eastern Africa between 2.6 and 1.7 million years ago but was also spread out of Africa and into Eurasia by traveling bands of H. Erectus, who took it as far east as Java by 1.8 million years ago and northern China by 1.6 million years ago. Mode 2 the Aculean industry eventually, more complex, Mo2 tools began to be developed through the Aculean industry, named after the site of saint Achael in France. The Aculean was characterized not by the core, but by the biface, the most notable form of which was the hand axe. The Aculean first appears in the archaeological record as early as 1.7 million years ago in the West Turkana area of Kenya and contemporaneously in southern Africa. The Leakies, excavators at Old Uve, defined a developed Old Owen period in which they believed they saw evidence of an overlap in Old Owen and Aculean. In their species-specific view of the two industries, Old Owen equated to H. Habilis and Aculean to H. Erectus. Developed Old Owen was assigned to Habilis and Aculean to Erectus. Subsequent dates on H. Erectus pushed the fossils back to well before Aculean tools, that is, Erectus must have initially used Mode 1. There was no reason to think, therefore, that developed Old Owen had to be Habilis, it could have been Erectus. Opponents of the view divide developed Old Owen between Old Owen and Aculean. There is no question, however, that Habilis and Erectus coexisted, as Habilis fossils are found as late as 1.4 million years ago. Meanwhile, African H. Erectus developed Mode 2. In any case a wave of Mode 2 then spread across Eurasia, resulting in use of both their H. Erectus may not have been the only hominin to leave Africa. European fossils are sometimes associated with Homo ergaster, a contemporary of H. Erectus in Africa. In contrast to an old Owen tool, which is the result of a fortuitous and probably extempore operation to obtain one sharp edge on a stone, an Aculean tool is a planned result of a manufacturing process. The manufacturer begins with a blank, either a larger stone or a slab knocked off a larger rock. From this blank he or she removes large flakes, to be used as cores. 
standing a core on edge on an anvil stone, he or she hits the exposed edge with centripetal blows of a hard hammer to roughly shape the implement. Then he or she works it over again, or retouches it, with a soft hammer of wood or bone to produce a tool finely chipped all over consisting of two convex surfaces intersecting in a sharp edge. Such a tool is used for slicing, concussion wood destroy the edge and cut the hand. Some mode 2 tools are disc-shaped, others ovoid, others leaf-shaped and pointed, and others elongated and pointed at the distal end, with a blunt surface at the proximal end, obviously used for drilling. Mode 2 tools are used for butchering, not being composite they are not very appropriate killing instruments. The killing must have been done some other way. Mode 2 tools are larger than old Owen. The blank was ported to serve as an ongoing source of flakes until it was finally retouched as a finished tool itself. Edges were often sharpened by further retouching. Mode 3. The Mousterian industry eventually, the Aculean in Europe was replaced by a lithic technology known as the Mousterian industry which was named after the site of Le Moussier in France where examples were first uncovered in the 1860s. Evolving from the Aculean, it adopted the Lavalois technique to produce smaller and sharper knife-like tools as well as scrapers. The Mousterian industry was developed and used primarily by the Neanderthals, a native European and Middle Eastern hominin species. Mode of E. The Aurignacian industry The long blades of the Upper Paleolithic Mode 4 industries appear during the Upper Paleolithic. The Aurignacian culture is a good example of Mode 4 tool production. Mode V. The Microlithic Industries Mode 5 stone tools involve the production of microliths, which were used in composite tools, mainly fastened to a haft. Examples include the Magdalenian culture, Neolithic industries in prehistoric Japan, ground stone tools appear during the Japanese Paleolithic period. Elsewhere, ground stone tools became important during the Neolithic period. These ground or polished implements are manufactured from larger grained materials such as basalt, jade and jadeite. Green stone and sim forms of rhyolite which are not suitable for flaking. The green stone industry was important in the English Lake District and is known as the Langdale Axe industry. Ground stone implements included adzes, celts, and axes, which were manufactured using a labor-intensive, time-consuming method of repeated grinding against an abrasive stone, often using water as a lubricant. Because of their coarse surfaces, some ground stone tools were used for grinding plant foods and were polished not just by intentional shaping, but also by use. Manos are hand stones used in conjunction with metates for grinding corn or grain. Polishing increased the intrinsic mechanical strength of the axe. Polished stone axes were important for the widespread clearance of woods and forests during the Neolithic period. When crop and livestock farming developed on a large scale, they are distributed very widely and were traded over great distances since the best rock types were often very local. They also became venerated objects, and were frequently buried in long barrows or round barrows with their former owners. During the Neolithic period, large axes were made from flint nodules by chipping a rough shape, a so-called rough out. Such products were traded across a wide area. The rough outs were then polished to give the surface a fine finish to create the axe head. Polishing not only increased the final strength of the product but also meant that the head could penetrate wood more easily. Such axe heads were needed in large numbers for forest clearance and the establishment of settlements and farmsteads, a characteristic of the Neolithic period. There were many sources of supply, including Grimes Graves in Suffolk, Sisbury in Sussex and Spines near Mons in Belgium to mention but a few. In Britain, there were numerous small quarries in downland areas where flint was removed for local use. For example, many other rocks were used to make axes from stones. 
including the Langdale Axe industry as well as numerous other sites such as Penmine Marin Tiverbullia in Coantrum, Ulster. In Langdale, there many outcrops of the greenstone were exploited, and napped where the stone was extracted. The sites exhibit piles of waste flakes, as well as rejected rough outs. Polishing improved the mechanical strength of the tools, so increasing their life and effectiveness. Many other tools were developed using the same techniques. Such products were traded across the country and abroad. Modern uses The invention of the flintlock gun mechanism in the 16th century produced a demand for specially shaped gun flints. The gun flint industry survived until the middle of the 20th century in some places, including in the English town of Brandon. For specialist purposes glass knives are still made and used today particularly for cutting thin sections for electron microscopy in a technique known as microtomy. Freshly cut blades are always used since the sharpness of the edge is very great. These knives are made from high-quality manufactured glass, however, not from natural raw materials such as chert or obsidian. Surgical knives made from obsidian are still used in some delicate surgeries. Tool stone. In archaeology, a tool stone is a type of stone that is used to manufacture stone tools. Alternatively, the term can be used to refer to stones used as the raw material for tools.